What is up? This is Andy Francis, and I'm here to talk Thursday night pick 'em on No House Advantage. Happy Hump Day, everyone. But then again, if you're a DFS player, a fantasy player, a sports better, there's no such thing as Hump Day. We all know it's just jagged slopes in our lives. And our week starts on Wednesday sometimes. Day one is Wednesday when practice reports come out. So I don't know if it's hump day for you. Hopefully it is in some capacity. But I know what it is, and it's time for you to enter a pick em tournament on No House Advantage. And if you haven't done that before, let me explain it to you real quick. No House Advantage, it combines fantasy football and player props in an easy to use platform. It's gonna show you a player, Amari Cooper, it's gonna give you an amount of yards, 37 and a half, and then you go over or under, depending on what you like. Oh, Nick Chubb, how many rushing yards? 90, oh, over and under. And you pick these player props, and the more you get correct, the more you rise in the standings and you you see your money multiply. And No House Advantage also does a second type of contest called Verse the House, where if you can get all five of your picks right, you get up to 20 times your money. So if you're a good prop player, always have trouble saying a a prop picking player, then No House Advantage is probably the right place for you. And if you go there using the link below in the description, they're going to match your first deposit up to $25. You slap 25 down, they slap 25. I don't don't know why we're slapping it, but you give 25, you get 25, and you can throw yourself in this Thursday night pick them contest. And who knows, maybe win win a couple of shekels. So the first pick that I got for this game is that aforementioned Amari Cooper. He had over 10 targets last game. He had over 100 yards. He's more likely to go over than not. When you see the tape, even from week one, when he had a relatively lackluster performance, he was getting open at will. And then they mentioned on last week's broadcast, Jacoby Brissett went back and watched the tape. Oh, he's open, open on all those plays. And then he made a concerted effort to get him the ball. I think that will continue. Remember, we, we're talking about Amari Cooper here, and he has a lower yardage total than Chase Claypool, who's maxing out at four behind the line of scrimmage type catches per game. I got to take that, Cooper. Maybe they're baiting me to take it, but I can't say no to it. And then his quarterback, the numbers are so low. Half of a touchdown pass. One touchdown? Look, I'm not saying Jacoby Brish- Brichette. But Jacoby Bruschetta, uh, Jacoby Brissett is lighting up the world here. But even in the first two weeks, he's had one touchdown pass. This guy can't get one touchdown pass at home. It doesn't even have to be skillful. One pass, my God, it could be one of those shovel passes from the two yard line. I have to take that. It's just, it's just ridiculously low for a prime time game at home. I know they try to run the ball, but I got to take Brissett on that one. On the other side of the ball, Pat Fryer move. And he's playing with a quarterback who, let's just say, isn't the most confident. And rather than take that relatively low yardage total, I'm going to take the under on four and a half receptions. He topped it by one week one, and he missed it by one week two. But on the road at Cleveland, Trubisky did not look very impressive these last couple of weeks. And I I think asking for five catches out of anybody in this offense... Well, I guess maybe with the exception of Deontay Johnson, because they they seem to, they will find a way to get that guy the ball no matter what. But Pat Fryermuth, no, I got to take under four and a half catches for him. On the other side, the tight end, David Njoku, he hasn't really been involved in the offense like they thought he was going to be during the preseason. What do you have, one catch week one, maybe three catches week two? He's clearly not a focal point of the op- offense. We saw Donovan Peoples-Jones semi go off week one. We saw Cooper go off week two. And I don't see over three and a half catches in the cards for David Njoku. So give me the under on Njoku. I'm taking the under on both of those tight ends. And then lastly, that aforementioned Donovan Peoples-Jones. He had like one catch. Le- no, he had zero catches. One target last week. But usually when you're a starting wide receiver and they saw him get over 10 targets in game one, I think they're likely to come back to him. You know Pittsburgh watched last game where they they know that Cooper is the person that has to be defended. So who's going to get the easier coverage? Who's going to get the single coverage? Who's going to get the better looks probably? Donovan Peoples-Jones. I'm going to go over on his yardage total. I mean, both of these receivers, those two, those two numbers are too 
low for every down receiver. This isn't one of those teams that's just spreading. It's not like the pat you see with the Packers right now where it's a little bit of everybody. It's two guys out there. You saw one go off week one, another go off week two. All they both need is 39 yards and you're set. So those are five picks that I'd like to lend to you for this Thursday Night Football Pick'em Tournament on No House Advantage. Always remember, if you don't want to trust my picks, you don't have to. Maybe you shouldn't. You can go directly over to Stochastic. They offer free projections for this contest. Yeah, they did you a favor. They made these projections for free. So why don't you do me a favor? You know, they do you a favor, then you do me a favor. It's pay it forward, like Helen Hunt and Kevin Spacey. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Everybody would really appreciate it, including me. And then I will see you next time for a couple of Sunday picks. Take it easy. Have a good one. Enjoy the high-flying Thursday night game.